Hey guys, welcome to another Minecraft video. And today in Minecraft, we're just gonna have a look at. No! 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 Alright, ladies and gents, so today we're just going to be doing a quick demo on Unity 3D. Uh, we'll be setting up our folders inside Unity 3D, moving some elements around our UI to make it easier to work with, uh, and then we'll be importing some sprites. So first thing that happens when you get Unity 3 open is it will look something like this. You'll have your hierarchy on the left, your inspector on the right, uh, you'll have your project and your console combined down the bottom. Now I'm just going to move this around a little bit in a way that suits me that makes it easy to understand. So I'm just going to move my project so you can do that by left clicking on it and I'm going to drag it over here beside my inspector and then I'm then going to shrink it down and then I'm just going to shrink my console down and my hierarchy a little bit. Alright, once I've done that, I'm going to adjust my project again. So if you right click on the word project, you actually get a bunch of options. Uh, I'm going to change it from two column layout, which is its standard one, into one column layout. I just find this much easier to work with. So once you've done that, we're just going to put in uh, some new folders first. So to do that, you can either click on the plus folder up the top and go to folder. Alright, so the first folder I'm going to create is called my script folder. Or you can right click on the word assets and then go create folder. Either way works. So my next folder will be my animations folder. And then the last folder I'm going to create will be a sprites folder. Alright, I like to have a decent amount of folders set up in my assets, depending on what type of game I'll be making, just to make it easier to sort through what we have in the game. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our sprite sheet into our sprites folder. So my students or your files will be on Google Classroom for this. So I've already downloaded it from Google Classroom so I'll go to my downloads file. Uh, I will find it, it's called Ken Spritz. And you just left click, drag and then drag it onto the sprites folder. Alright, you'll notice that there's a little arrow beside it, so you can open it up, and I can see my sprite sheet here. Alright, so the first thing I need to do is I need to change its texture type. So at the moment it's a default, I'm going to set this to a sprite, which is for 2D and user interface. Now you can clearly see on my sprite sheet that that's not a single sprite, it's a multiple sprite. So to change that, just left click on single, change it to multiple, all right, and then press apply. All right, now you can see that it's changed into a 2D sprite sheet with no background on it. All right, and then it allows us to select multiple sprites. So let's slice our sprite sheet. To do that, we click on the sprite editor. All right, this window, when you first open it, will be quite small. All right, so I just like to enlarge it a bit. All right, we're going to use the slice button. All right, I'm going to leave it at an automatic but I'm going to change the pivot to bottom. All right, for the type of game we're making, I just like to work off the bottom of the character. So we'll slice it. All right, and now you can see these squares around the character. All right, so press apply. All right, and it will be able to select the individual sprites here. So you can cycle through them all, and it gives you all the information about each of the sprites. Okay, so now we've done that, we can close our sprite editor, and you'll notice that the arrow beside our Ken sprite sheet is there, and now we will have all of our sprites attached individually. So, now we've got our sprites, we need to create what is called our game objects. Now to do that, we use our hierarchy, so we use this space over here, which lets us see all of our game objects. Now, I like to keep things in a nice, clean order, so I'm going to create a parent folder first. To do that, I right click on this gray space, I go to create empty, and then I go over to my inspector, and I'm going to rename it world. All right, once you've typed your name in, you have to press enter, All right, otherwise it won't save the name. So you can see over here, it's now called world. All right, then I'm going to right click on world, and I'm going to create another empty, so I'm going to create a child, and I'm going to call this background. Alright, 
so this is where I'm going to put the background sprite, so sprite 49. Alright, so this is going to be my background, this is where I'm going to go down and get to my sprite 49 and I'm going to put my background sprites into my background. Now to do that, I need what's called a sprite renderer. So I'm going to go to my inspector with background selected, add component and type the word sprite. All right, and that'll give me all the options that have the word sprite in them. Now I want sprite renderer and you'll see its default will be set to none. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this circle here and this will bring up all of the sprites available to me. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to 49 all right, and double click on it. So now you can see the sprite is in the game. Now at the moment it's very small so we're going to make it a little bit larger. So we're going to change the X and the Y on the scale of our background. We're going to set both of those to 5 and then we're going to go to the position on the Y and set that to minus 5. Alright, so that should be in about the center. So now that we've done that, we're going to start creating some animations. Now as you can see, I have a lot of individual sprites here. Now what Unity lets us do is it lets us turn these individual sprites into animations by very simply selecting the sprites that we want and then dragging them into the scene. So the first sprite I'm going to create is going to be my idle sprite. Now it's going to go from Ken sprite 0 to Ken sprite 9. So I'm going to select 0, I'm going to hold the shift key down and select Ken sprite 9. So you can see now that they're all selected. So then I'm going to left click on any of these selections drag it into the scene and then let go of my left button. All right, you can see here that it's trying to create an anim or an animation. So I'm going to go into my animation folder all right, and my first sprite from 0 to 9 is called idle. So I'll save that all right, and then you'll notice up here in my animations I've got an arrow so I've now got idle and Ken sprite 0. You can also see in the hierarchy, Ken Sprite Zero. So that's him there. All right, so I'm now going to create the rest of my animations. My second animation is Walk, and that goes from Sprite 10 to Sprite 20. All right, so same thing, select 10, hold shift, select 20. All right, drag them onto the scene. Go to my animations folder, and this is my walking animation. Alright, my third sprite is from 21 to 31. I'm going to drag it onto the scene. Alright, animations. And this is my Hadouken. Alright, then I've got sprite 32 to 37. I'll drag that onto the scene, animations, and this is my crouching animation. And then my final sprite is 37 to 48. I don't want to select 49 because that is our background. So drag it onto the scene, animations, and this is my jumping animation. Oh, no, cancel that. It's 38 to 48, not 37. It's my jump. Alright, so I can see all my animations there. If I scroll up in my project, I can see my crouch, Hadouken, jump, walk, uh, idle, jump, and walk. So to test them all now, all you need to do is press the play button. And hopefully you can't see any animations. So let's fix that. So press play button again. If you're doing any work while the play button is pressed, it will not save. When you press it again, you'll lose all your work. Now to make it so that we can see our animations over the top of our background, what we're going to do is we're going to select our world, 
when you go to the Z axis and we're going to set that to 1 and that will push it backwards into the background. Alright so if we go up and test it again by pressing the play button we should hopefully now see all of our characters there following their animation. Now it's always good to test your animation so you can check whether or not you have an extra sprite thrown in there somewhere and it will stand out quite glaringly right here. So that's all for today guys. See you guys in the next video.